Greetings. I wanted to spend a little bit of uh, time talking about serial murder, uh, profiling, and the court system. And a lot of this will be derived from uh, Dr. Craig Forsythe's uh, work, um, an article that he published in the American Journal of Criminal Justice, Volume 40, Number 4, in October 2015, pages uh, 861 to 875, titled Posing, the Sociological Routine of a Serial Killer. And Dr. Forsyth is a mitigation expert who works on death penalty cases. And the case that he writes about here is the case of Ronald Dominique, who confessed to raping and killing at least 23 men in southeast Louisiana. He ended up um, getting eight life sentences uh, with a plea deal, uh, thus avoiding the death penalty. And a lot of uh, that is attributed to the work of Dr. Forsyth, who has been an expert in uh, the mitigation uh, field in um, reducing death penalties to life sentences. So Dr. Forsyth has a lot of insight into serial murders and also those who are uh, who have committed crimes that resulted in death penalties. And he was able to interview uh, the the perpetrator as well as the perpetrator's friends and and family. And one of the things he points out in looking at the profile of Ronald Dominique is that he lived in two different worlds. He lives in, in the world of being a friendly, helpful uh, neighbor uh, and son. And then also he cross-dressed in shows at a club. Um, and, and Dominique was um, gay and he was ridiculed as a teen for being uh, homosexual. He was bullied, obviously. And... Um, he also had a severe heart condition, and this led to uh, financial and, and uh, other uh, problems. But before he became a serial killer, he, um, also, he was um, uh, involved in, in, in raping uh, others. Uh, and, and so if we look at some of the factors that might be related to the development of his um, uh, serial murder uh, you know, style, um, or behaviors, we see uh, several events that, that may have influenced in, in some manner. Uh, first of all, he was bullied as a teenager, and um, uh, he also uh, witnessed some um, very strange, inappropriate sexual behaviors between uh, his mother and his, and his mother's brother. And um, this, of course, leads to a problem with developing uh, healthy sexual boundaries. He, as I mentioned before, he was involved in several rapes before the um, serial murders. And um, he also looked at, uh, we also can look at the idea of a progression of uh, violent uh, behavior. And um, when we look at uh, what happened in his cases, we, we see that he um, started to have sex with these men and then he would strangle them until they died. And um, he tried, of course, to rationalize his killings, which often we see serial killers do, uh, that uh, saying that they were greedy and they were asking him for money. Uh, of course, these are irrational uh, bizarre statements to serial murders make and whether they actually believe it or not or they're trying to make an excuse is up for uh, debate. And um, again, probably one of the big points here is that, uh, that he tended to lead a relatively normal life outside of his violent behavior. And so that becomes problematic for us in, 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 in tracking down the serial killers and um, uh, having, you know, making arrests, prosecutions and, and, and the like, uh, that uh, serial killers can live among us and blend in uh, very easily. And, and so, um, uh, again, uh, uh, Dr. Forsyth then presents uh, some of the profiles of, of um, the more uh, common profiles of, of serial murders in um, the United States. And some of the things, though, that we need to probably take a, a look at, you know, for example, that um, uh, certainly that criminal profiling has flaws. And there's also a, a lot of uh, popular myths that have been uh, presented. And um, often the media will pick up on certain cases and sensationalize the presentation of that that case. But uh, looking back, I think what Forsyth really stresses in that is important is that 
uh, you know, the serial killers have this divided identity, or to quote him um, uh, from page uh, 869, uh, that they live, quote, two separate entities with their own set of realities and intentions, end quote. I'll read that again because I think that's such an important statement. Two separate entities with their own set of realities and intentions. So what we have here, uh, and, and again, in looking at the practice of Dr. Sorth Forsyth, we have um, his, his, he has a strong academic background in this area, but also he has that uh, experience working in the field and trying to understand uh, that uh, you know serial murderers, and, and realizing that there may not be this typical serial killer. Uh, there are some similarities, but also uh, differences, and. Um, uh, and again, you know, when we started looking at all these differences in our, our textbook, we could see that we started to come up with typologies and we started to look at um, uh, male serial killers, female serial killers, uh, health care could be male or female, obviously, and then also group uh, serial killers. And then I even went as far as as to bring in in the, in the course genocidal group perpetrators. And, and so there's a lot of um, work to be done in, in, in the field, but um, we also have a, a, a lot of research that has um, helped us uh, along, along the way. A lot of times people ask me, how do you prevent? And uh, I always go ahead and just say, you know, if you want to resolve or you want to prevent crime problems, you have to start prenatally. You have to have, uh, you know, access to um, health care. Uh, for um, uh, newborns and for mothers, and you have to have supportive systems in the schools and the medical system, in um, the mental health system, uh, to um, to prevent uh, this from happening. And obviously, there will be cases that will fall through uh, the cracks, as they say, and um, we won't won't catch. But um, we we do find there are some common themes. And 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 again, you, you know, we also might want to look at how we as a society react to serial killers and if there's different things we can do there and if um, you know there's different methods of uh, investigation that um, uh, can be applied using some of the newer technologies which always is amazing to look at if you uh, trace you know from let's say the 1950s to current the changes in in the technology in terms of investigation and uh, information and, and surveillance and, and, and all that. So there certainly is a lot uh, going on here. And then um, thinking about the different uh, cases we've seen and uh, the, the trials and, and, and the outcomes, uh, we always need to put this into a um, perspective uh, for comparative purposes uh, to, to try to understand this better. And this wraps up this uh, video. Thank you.